Welcome to Awakening You channel. If you appreciate what we do, please support us. Thank you. Dear sons and daughters of planet Earth. I am Sananda. Once again, I am very grateful to be able to be here expanding my teachings a little more. Today I'm going to talk to you about an interesting subject, anger. What is this feeling? Before talking about anger, I need to talk about love. Love, true love, is the one that brings joy, brings happiness, brings fulfillment, brings balance, brings peace in the heart. And certainly, it can be experienced by each one of you, you just need to look at it this way, because any other form of love is not true love, they are small copies of the true feeling totally manipulated, to look like love, but they are not true love. We can say that love is one of the highest vibrations that exists in the universe. It's connected with gratitude, with faith, and it's a feeling that cures many of the problems you have. If you start to emanate just love for anything, you can love everything, not just human beings, animals, vegetables, to everything. Because the feeling emanated will bring positive vibrations to everything you touch, it will bring balance, good functioning just because you love and emanate this feeling. Now don't confuse love with attachment. When I talk about emanating love for an object, it is being grateful for what that object represents. If it is a device that helps you, be grateful for the help it is giving you. If it's just an ornament that makes your heart happy, then be grateful that it has this function. This is the type of love I'm referring to, it's not attachment, it's not idolizing an object, it's not making it the function of your life. But the topic here is anger. And anger is a feeling that contains a highly negative vibration. The threshold between anger and hatred is very small. One can become the other, you just need to feed this anger. So what is it to feel angry? I can say that it is pure ego, the ego gets up and shouts that it's not good for it, that it's not what it expected that it's bad for it. So, anger is contesting something that the other person did and that you didn't like. Then the ego rises full of powers, full of strength, provoking an attitude in you. Normally the attitudes that come from anger are thoughtless attitudes, bitter words, violent attitudes, even deeper negative feelings. So anger is capable of causing an explosion of problems, of imbalance in everyone who feels it. When you emanate anger towards someone, it is a two-way street. You emanate all this ego strength onto each other, and throw all this negativity onto each other, then he will feel its negative charge. How about you? No, you will not get away with it, because this negative charge that you emanated, in equal proportion remains in you, in your own body. So any and all feelings that go hand in hand with anger, such as hatred, revenge, malice, everything that aims to release any negative feeling on the other, it goes to the other but stays in you too. You don't get away with this moment, it reverberates in your body too. Let's say you are that person who, humanly, one day felt angry, argued with someone, fought, said deep words that hurt, that make it hurt. And when that moment is over, you realize that you talked too much, acted untimely, acted without thinking, acted in the heat of the moment. But the harm has already been done, you have already pushed all of this onto others and worse, onto yourself as well. And as we have already said here, not just me but many beings of light, there is only one way to correct this, asking for forgiveness. The question here is not who is right or who is wrong. Remember, no judgment. So there is no right and wrong. For you, that was wrong, for whoever did it, maybe they have a different view of what you think is wrong. So who is right and who is wrong? The path is not there. The solution to the problem is not finding who is right and who is not. The solution to the problem is to sit down, look each other in the eye and the one who took the lead in doing something stupid, in hurting the other, in hurting the other with words, emanating all their anger, ask for forgiveness. 
but I can also say that the other doesn't necessarily have to get away with it. Because if he did something so serious to throw you off balance, let's say he also made a mistake. Then you must also ask for forgiveness. So it's a mutual exchange of forgiveness, and even more so, it's time to sit down and talk, each person expressing their point of view. Not wanting to override the other, and talk about it, try to reach a consensus, an agreement. This is how you free yourself from this burden emanated by you. It's no use just asking for forgiveness and letting it go, because inside your heart, it hasn't been resolved. Deep down you still think that the other person made a mistake, that they hurt you, that they caused your outburst of anger. And if you don't say anything and the other person simply accepts your request for forgiveness and leaves it at that, tomorrow he will do the same thing, because you simply forgave him, didn't talk about it, didn't tell him that it wasn't good for him. You. So understand that everything has to be a two-way street. It doesn't matter who is right and who is wrong, they both got hurt. So it is necessary to talk about it, but in this conversation, both of you remove the ego from within, that little bug that will stick in your ear, no, you are the one who is right, the other person is always wrong. When an argument starts like this, you get nowhere, they both made mistakes. This is obvious, because no one throws tantrums for nothing. Something took him off balance, something the other did seriously took him off balance. So that other person also has to learn to respect the balance of whoever committed the problem. So it's not enough to just. Ah, I apologize for my temper tantrum. But have you actually forgiven what was done? Why did that other person do this to you, did you ask him that? Why did he do it? Now at this moment, in this conversation, you have to be open to listening, because the other person may tell you things that you won't like about yourself. That's why the ego has to stay at another table, it has to be left out of the conversation. There are people who hurt others, without having a reason, they hurt just for the sake of hurting because they like it. But it's worth showing these people that they are going down the wrong path, and that doesn't go unpunished for them either. So. It's not just asking for forgiveness, it's a two-way street. Who provoked the anger and who had an outburst of anger? Nobody is right and nobody is wrong. There is no I'm right, you're right, no one is right. One shouldn't have provoked and the other shouldn't have reacted. This is the solution, that is, the event should not have happened. So you have to realize that someone always gets hurt, someone hurts. But it is important that it is put on the table, as each person felt, but without hurt feelings. Because as long as there is hurt, as long as there is suffering from the act performed, nothing can be resolved. You might say, oh, I forgive you. But that remains inside. And every time you look at the person, it comes back and comes back strong. So there was no true forgiveness. And did you explain to the other person, what did that actually do to you? So that he realizes the harm he caused him? If you don't talk, if you simply forgive, he won't learn and will make the same mistake later. It is a double way path. So when we always say here, that the feeling that has to happen at this moment in your life is forgiveness, yes it is forgiveness, but it has to be true forgiveness. It's that forgiveness that tomorrow when you think about it, you won't feel anything, because that was forgiven. In many cases, there is no longer even a way to ask for forgiveness, because the person has left your life, the person, you don't even know where you are anymore. But that doesn't stop you from forgiving, you just need to think about the person themselves, put them in your mind and ask them for forgiveness. Rest assured that she will receive your request for forgiveness. Be sure of that. So, don't make it an obstacle. Yes, you are capable of thinking about the person and asking for forgiveness. Whether she in turn will forgive you, you will not know. But who knows, maybe one day you too will be able to receive this request for forgiveness. 
they will not feel that the other side has understood and also asked for forgiveness. Then it will be fantastic, because they both resolved that problem. So what's the big lesson from all this? Firstly, do not provoke anything that hurts the other, nothing that makes the other feel angry with you. This is the first action. Because if that doesn't happen, this whole game that I told you about here won't happen. There will be no anger, there will be no reason, there will be no asking for forgiveness because the act did not happen. I'm not saying here that you have to coddle people all day, that you have to suck up, as you like to say, all the time. It's not about you looking good, just to get attention. It's simply about having that great feeling that I've mentioned here countless times, respect. Just respect, nothing more. You are not obliged to love everyone, but I would say that you should respect everyone. Because when you respect others, you don't hurt them, you don't hurt them, you don't do anything against them, because you respect them. Okay, that's very simple. So let's not understand that now everything you do, you can continue doing and asking for forgiveness. The wisdom is not to do it, not to start the process, not to hurt anyone, not to make anyone angry. This is the great wisdom, it is respect. If there is no love, at least there is respect. And then you will be sure that on your journey no one will feel angry with you, because you did not provoke it in anyone. There may even be some cases, where people feel anger out of envy. You didn't do anything against them, but they feel angry at the being you are, at the capabilities you have, they wanted to be like you and then they feel angry for not being like you. Then you may ask me, and does this anger reach you? Enough, definitely enough. But if you remain balanced, always respecting and loving others, this anger will just be like a, a slight shiver that will hit your body. But your vibration will be so good that it won't make an address, it won't affect you. Now if you vibrate low too, that anger will incite in you, provoke anger in other people. Do you understand what a sequence is? And the one who emanated all this senseless anger from him just out of envy, is carrying it all with him too, lowering his vibration even further. In other words, no one gets away with anything. Every action always has a reaction, that's all. So what is the great wisdom? Don't provoke anyone, don't do anything that provokes an opposite reaction in others. This is great wisdom. It's not simply keeping quiet and accepting everything so as not to hurt the other, so as not to fight, that's not it. But if there's something you don't like, sit down with the person at a table and leave your ego aside. He cannot participate in the conversation, the ego has to be put aside. And you can talk like two beings who respect each other, and calmly put your point of view. I guarantee that you will leave there feeling light and evolved each learning a lesson in your own way. So I leave you to reflect on everything I said here today. Do not emanate anger, because it will go away, but it will stay with you too. So don't do that. Respect each other. If the other person doesn't respect you, talk to him, without ego, and listen to his arguments. If he has no argument, he will probably remain silent, listening to everything you are saying. Now, if he doesn't hear anything you said, that's a question you'll have to think about. But it's not by emanating anger against him that you'll solve anything. 